Howdy peeps, hope you're doing well. Um, I suppose thank you for the likes and the support, I suppose, on the last video that I did uh, yesterday. Um, pre preparation, preparation, man, I'm so on it. The War Against Boys and Men UK 2021. You know, it's kind of s surprising for me. Um, I mean, I've got videos here. The last one was Bars and Expectations from Men. And it's taken a week to get about 53 views and a handful of those are probably mine. Of course, when people leave comments and so on, sometimes I'll check the video back afterwards to make sure I haven't said I haven't made any mistakes that need correcting or something like that. Um, but this one, it's got 48 views in a, like a day ago. <laughs> so I suppose thank you all very much for that. It is really appreciated. Um, now there's a couple of things that I, I think I really need to point out uh, for the sake of clarification is um, when I'm going up against something, you know, someone posts something on the interwebs and I'm like, you ain't getting away with that, right? I'm not having an attack on the person, right? It's not, it's, I'm not having a go at them. I'm having a go at the statement and my thoughts and opinions on that. Now, this this one I think is, I don't know if the person that put a post up actually watches my channel, if they know about it or anything like that. Maybe they do, right? Maybe they do. Um, but like I say, it's, it's not to do with them on a personal level. It's like, think about what you're posting. You know, there's, there's uh, the other one that's been doing the rounds is what Kurt Cobain said. And... Um, it's kind of difficult. I mean, I, I was brought up with a lot of sort of uh, hip hop, grunge, and metal back in the day. So I've listened to probably most, if not all, of Nirvana's albums up until the point where uh, Kurt decided to take his life um, due to the circumstances that surrounded him depression, a lot of things going on in his life that he wasn't happy about. He was having a lot of problems with uh, Courtney Love at the time from. Yeah, uh, from the band Hull. Uh, I suppose this is a bit of a history lesson, maybe, for some of you guys, the younger generations, um, with regards to grunge music and all of that. And the person that originally put the post up that I sort of said, well, hang on a second, like, he's, one of the songs on the album is called Rape Me. And although it's not about him being raped, what people can tend to do, you know, if, if they don't know Nirvana, they don't know who Kurt Cobain is, they might recognise the name. Um, but he sort of said, oh yeah, you got to teach boys not to rape. So, <laughs> and, and here's another sort of thing. I've done a bit of, it, it's kind of factual, but it's kind of a shit stirring as well on social media. I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to put this one out there. If, if they're going to, they're going to throw apples our way, I'm going to throw a few apples back. And that's, that's how it's going to be. And that's, that's equality. You throw an apple, I throw an apple. <laughs> and on we go. It's just clown world, man. It's what we do. <laughs> so I, I've kind of pointed out that, you know, the majority of teachers are women. And a lot of these women are complaining that the boys are going around causing all these atrocities. And it's like, well, who's teaching them what exactly? You know, they're spending the majority of their time at school with teachers, which is um, a field that is predominantly female orientated. What are they teaching them? Now, with that, I kind of have to bring up another kind of topic which is relevant to that. And that is the amount of female school teachers that get away with abusing their students. Yeah, very serious matter. But I'll tell you when it's even more of a serious matter, and you do hear more headlines about it, is when a male teacher does it to a female student. And then out comes that, that broad brush again of all men. Now, we all know it's not all men. Right. And there are lots of you ladies out there that probably probably watch the channel. You know that I know and I know that you know that it's not all men. The problem is this is that thing of generalization, uh, generalizations and this whole equality thing. And my, I guess, perception and thought on how these feminists see things. Well, if one man is equal to the next and one man has right raped someone or murdered someone or caused an, an atrocity of some description then equality is that all all men do that 
it, is this their black and white thinking? You know, it's, oh yeah, it's all men. And you see, the thing is, when it comes down to us guys needing the support of women who disagree with a statement like that, that it's they know it's not all men. When it comes down to standing up and being counted and actually standing alongside the men, they don't because there are consequences for that. And, you know, we've seen it with Lacey Green. Some of you may remember her channel. I mean, I only watched it a few times. She's one of these crazy feminists back at the time. I don't know what she's doing today. I have no idea. I do know that she did end up getting with a YouTuber for a little while. I don't know if it worked out. But when she left feminism behind and she made a video about it the stuff that was you know going to her inbox was like de the usual sort of thing death threats and you know the just just the whole shaming and all of that and it's like there probably weren't many guys doing that i'm sure there might have been a few male feminists you'll know my thoughts on male feminists usually the worst the worst ones are male feminists just saying it is what it is but like I say, when it comes down to us us guys needing women there to support what we're saying and to kind of get the message across that, look, it really isn't all men. And by, punish, uh, by punishing a whole group, you know, that's that's just bad. That's not how you do things. That's not... I mean, is it equality? Yeah, it's it's equal because you're, you're tiring everyone with the same brush. But it's like, all right, then I'll, I'll bring up Lorena Bobbitt then. She physically cut a guy's member off as i sort of said before it was her husband allegedly because he cheated or she thought he was cheating or whatever right it doesn't matter it doesn't give you the right to do that right it doesn't give anyone the right to do that but women laugh about that and that's fine do we not see a problem with that i i definitely do see a problem now i get it right we all crack jokes we all make fun of real shit situations that it, it's kind of like a, a bit of kind of dark humor but you see, when you've got a, a group that is suggesting things like 6 p.m. curfews, you know, educate your boys and all this sort of a thing, it doesn't really fill the rest of us with any sort of confidence that you're meeting us halfway. It sounds to me and a lot of other guys out there, you know, it's not equality. As as a a commenter left recently it's not about equality it's about supremacy clearly because they're advocating that men can only do bad and women can only do good it's not how it works there's plenty of bad women out there plenty of them and this is where we're at so you know and i've sort of thought to myself it's like there's always you know because i over the, the sort of last year, I wanted things to die down, and you know, I, I know a lot of you guys won't won't think much of uh, my thoughts with regards to relationships. But every now and then, I might meet someone and think, "Oh well, you know, they seem okay, right? Yeah, well, we all we all do that. <laughs> we all do that. And it's like, uh, what did I just do? You know, what, why, why did I do that? Um, but look, it's. I give people the benefit of the doubt. Now, some people are going to abuse that in life. And it doesn't matter which, I suppose, side you're looking at it from. Right? You're going to get guys out there that are players. You know, they're going to cheat on women. And that's that's who they are. And that's what they do. And a lot of time, you know, I've spoken about the, the projected fantasy of who we want the other person to be. I think in a, in a lot of cases, I think women are the worst for it. But at the same time, they can also be the worst for the other sort of side of that when they become um, more promiscuous in relationships, infidelity, uh, not being honest, not telling the truth, or if we're going to call it out, just blatantly lying, you know. And then they look for the excuse to, to justify why they did what they did, right? The truth is there ain't an excuse for doing that that sort of a thing, that kind of behaviour. As far as I'm concerned, there is no excuse. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, 
and it, it seems to me, and I know a lot of guys probably won't appreciate me talking about relationships too much, but the basis of a relationship is that you've got two people working together. And that with, you know, given the, the state of the majority of people today, we've all got our little dysfunctions or our dysfunctional aspects, should I say, you know, because of how we were brought up, how we were raised. So it does become very difficult. But wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> this, is, this would be such a big ask. But w wouldn't it be nice for, you know, a, a lot of guys and a lot of women too, if they could just deal with their personal dysfunction in such a way that when they met someone else that also had uh, their own personal dysfunctionality in life. I'm talking about like, um, I'm not talking about pair bonding because that's, that's sort of different. But I mean, you know, having the patience to actually be able to be a bit more understanding and compassionate with one another. Now, the problem with that is, you know, especially in my opinion with a lot of women is they will go from one end of the scale to the other and you all know what I sort of think about and people that you know work, work on the different ends of the scales and I suppose I'm guilty of it too so I'm not excusing myself from that um, but imagine if you could just just find that someone that had the, the, the strengths and weaknesses that the other person also had the, the sort of countermeasures for those same strengths and weaknesses and that they can actually work it out together i mean could you imagine that it, that would be the biggest uh, fatal blow to this clown world that they're actually creating around us with this yet again massive divide i mean last year it was uh cops with the whole george floyd thing this year it's, you know, it's a police officer who's murdered a woman, so all men are bad, and so really, <laughs> and educate your boys, you know, and, you know, I suppose with all of that, I suppose I'll make this a little bit, a little bit more, I guess, kind of relevant, and I'll try and keep it relatively short as well, um, one of my buddies actually sent me a, a link to a thing, uh, to a page um, so I'll just try and find it uh, in whereas I'll see if I can read it quickly right so this is on the 23rd of January 2021 a 13 year old schoolboy named Oliver, Oliver Stevens was stabbed to death in a field after his girlfriend posted a 154 pound, £154 bounty on snapchat Oliver, more affectionately known as Ollie by friends and family, had allegedly become angry and upset after finding out that his girlfriend had been sending sexually explicit images of herself to other boys on Snapchat. Well, what a surprise. Oliver confronted her about this and a verbally aggressive altercation broke out between them. In response to this argument, his girlfriend then took, out, took to Snapchat and offered 154 quid to anyone willing to, air quotes, teach him a lesson. Further instructions of what she wanted done to Oliver can be seen in the Snapchat screenshots pictured below. A teenage boy who saw her social media advertisement accepted the offer. Ollie was then lured into a field in his hometown of Reading, United Kingdom, and stabbed in the back of the neck. He was killed just 250 yards away from the safety of his own home, as is shown in the photo above. The police are still investigating the possibility that a samurai sword was used to inflict the fatal wound. Again, it doesn't matter what was used. It doesn't matter what was used. It could have been a brick in a sock. It doesn't matter, right? It was done, and it was instigated by that girl. After the news of, uh, after the news broke of Oliver's, Oliver's tragic death, another Snapchat user who knew both Oliver and his girlfriend messaged her to say, "You're responsible for what happened, and you're fucking sick for it." No, yeah, exactly, absolutely. In response to this message, she said, I told the guy to rob him. I did not say murder him. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. She also replied with a laughing face emoji. Yeah, that's about right. Which is indicative of a lack of remorse or concern for the heinous, heinous crime that had taken place. And this is it. Who's teaching the girls? Who's teaching the girls that? Right. Female teachers? Well, male teachers get usually slandered and accused of fucking all sorts. So I'm assuming it's not going to be a male teacher that are taught to do that. Yeah, did you see how this works? In total, four boys and one girl, all alleged, all aged, sorry, all aged between just 13 and 14 years old, have been arrested for Oliver's murder. 
Due to the age of the perpetrators involved, they are unable to, ident to be identified in accordance with the UK law. Oh, I think they should name and shame them, absolutely, 100%. Straight up. Therefore, their names currently remain undisclosed and, in their f and their faces have also been pixelated in available images. A statement has since been released by Ollie's heartbroken family. Oliver was an enigma, having both autism and suspected pathological uh, demand avoidance. He became a challenge we never shied away from. He could get his own way with a weary smile and a cheeky grin. He always stood his ground and fought for the underdog while having an amazing depth of love, warmth and wit. Police have also appealed for any further information which may assist in the handling of this case. So all that for 154 quid. 154 pounds. You know, but here they are. It's all men, right? Now, yeah, you could argue there's lots that I could say about this one. And I'm gonna, in the little time that I have left on this, uh, on this particular video clip. Um, well, for starters, she instigated it. She put up a reward for him being harmed. All right, it went wrong. Someone t took it too far. I'm not justifying that, by the way. Yeah, he's now dead. He ain't coming back. She is responsible for his death. Absolutely, one hundred percent. And the accomplice, the guy that, the kid that done it, just as bad. Just as bad. They they, they should all go to jail and not be let out. Absolutely. Why? You know, and you, you got the, you got to look at the mentality of this as well. You've probably got some guy who's wanting to get in her panties. Probably. Just saying. Right. Wants to get in her panties. So he's going to be the gangster. Right. Because that, that's how a lot of kids think these days. It's like, oh, yeah, I've got to go out and show her what a great big man I am. It's like, no, mate, you're being a cunt and you just fucking killed someone. You've just deprived someone of their child a family, right? And all for what? A bit of clunge, which you're not going to get anyway because she's too busy sending her pics out to other fellas. It's like, good one, fam. You really thought about that one. And th th then you want a bit of remorse and sympathy. And it's like, you ain't getting that shit from me. You know, people should be grateful that I'm not a judge in a, in a case like that because I'll tell you what, man, they would not be seeing the light of day again. I'll put them fuckers in solitary for that shit. 13 and 14-year-olds. 13 and 14. And we've seen this before, but you know what the justice system does? Uh, we've seen this with the Bulgers. They killed a small baby, a toddler, um, the pair of them. And, they, you know, they, they got sent in prison. They got different identities. Um, and then they, they were involved in all sorts after that. Ch child abuse photos and shit like that found on their thing. This is, this is all, again, it gets hidden every now and then a little bit gets leaked out into the sort of, uh, so, uh, into media. And it's like, really? But yeah, let, let's let's talk about equality, shall we? Is, is it really boys out of the problem? Or is it the way they're raised? And the girls as well. Let's not forget them. I want to keep this equal. But. Thoughts, comments, and opinions, feel free to jot them down. Thank you very much for subscribing. Leave a like if you've liked it. Dislike it if you haven't. Comments. Till the next one, stay cool, stay free, peace out.